Howdy everybody. When I started this series, I intended to release videos with a much greater frequency than I have been. I've continued to work on this project, and uh, although the machining seems to be going pretty good, my goal of creating videos isn't going as well as I'd hoped. I've cut together a couple of videos, and on reviewing them, they seem to be a little long-winded, a little boring, so I'm going to try to cut them down into more specific parts so that if somebody starts a video and they get bored two minutes in, they can just turn it off and go to the next video instead of having to wonder what's coming up next. To that end, uh, in this video, which I'm going to call part two, I'd like to talk about how I designed the fixture to work with O-rings. So I'm sure you guys recognize this from the last video, but uh, let me just make the bottle cap transparent to kind of get it out of our way. And I also want to do a section view, and I want to cut it on the right plane and uh, show it from the back. And take a look inside here. This uh, fixture is basically a pneumatic cylinder. So air is fed in through either this inlet to fill the top chamber, which pushes the piston down, or this inlet to fill the bottom chamber, which pushes the piston up. Obviously, uh, when the piston moves, these shafts move along with it, which then pull the jaws. Uh, when the jaws get pushed up and down, the bottle cap also moves along with it. Since uh, we're working with air here, we want this to be airtight. To keep air from escaping the two chambers, I uh, have put in a series of O-rings. The largest one and probably the most obvious is uh, this one here, which goes between the base plate and the seal plate, which I'll uh, make transparent. All it does is keeps air from escaping from this chamber out through this crack out into the open. The second largest one is this one here, which uh, goes inside the piston and uh, separates the two chambers. Uh, obviously, if air was allowed to uh, move between this chamber and this chamber, the pneumatic cylinder wouldn't work. Moving along to the top chamber, there are two additional sets of O-rings that basically prevent air from escaping around these two shafts. One set keeps air from moving along the outside of the shaft and go in these two holes here, and the other set prevent air from going through the center hole of the shafts and uh, sit in these two holes here. Maybe I should have mentioned this earlier, but I am by no means an O-ring expert. Uh, I've managed to put this together and it seems to work okay, but uh, you know I'm sure that there are better ways to do this out there. I just wanted to pass along what I've been able to figure out and uh, you know maybe somebody will gain something from this. So when you're uh, designing grooves for o-rings or uh, glands as they're called you're probably gonna find that most of them fit into one of two uh, typical cases and they're both exemplified here. Um, either you're going to be sealing between the top and the bottom of the o-ring which is what's happening here or you're going to be sealing between the inside and outside of the o-ring as it is for the piston here. Um, you create the seal by compressing the o-ring between the two surfaces that you're sealing against. So uh, if you're using an o-ring with a width of 139 thousandths, which is what I'm using here, then uh, you're going to want to make the gland slightly smaller than that width. When I made my first pneumatic cylinder, which is uh, the power drawbar for my Taurus Pro, uh, I <laughs> just kind of assumed that the o-ring really had to be basically smashed in there in order for it to work right. So uh, when I when I made the uh, the power drawbar, 
I made, I don't remember how much I had the uh, O-ring compressing, but it was a complete pain in the ass to get it into the cylinder. Um, since then I did a little bit of experimenting and it seems to me that uh, compressing the O-ring by only about 10, 10 thousandths of an inch uh, seems to be enough. And that's actually the amount of compression that I have here. Um, I believe I did about 20 thousandths for this one. So what I have been doing is if I compress it, let's say uh, like for this one, 10 thousandths between the top and the bottom, I give an extra 10 thousandths uh, for the inside and the outside, which the um, O-ring can expand into. Um, let's kind of look a little bit closer at this one. When I was uh, picking the size for this gland, I basically wanted it to be roughly the same size as the bottle cap was going to be, just so that it would fit in the array uh, just as well as the bottle cap. I didn't, you know, want to uh, put my bottle caps out onto the fixture plate and then find out that my um, O-rings were going to need to overlap each other or something like that. So, um, I think I'll show you what O-rings I'm actually using. Uh, I bought almost all the hardware that I'm using on this uh, fixture plate from McMaster Car. And they have a uh, pretty good sl selection of O-rings. Um, they have a whole bunch of different materials and durometers. And they also have uh, a few different profiles. This is actually only, you know, the tip of the iceberg of what's out there. But they have round, square, and then what I'm using, I guess they're calling quad right here. Um, I also call them double seal O-rings. So, uh, they are separated by thickness. Actually, I should say by width. And uh, the width is actually, I think of it as being the height or the thickness of the O-ring, but um, I guess it's called the width. So they have a few different widths. Let's see, looks like 16th, 332nd, da, 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 up to a quarter inch. So there are a lot of different sizes to choose from. I had used some eighth inch ones in the past so that's what I decided to use uh, for this project as well. As I mentioned, I wanted the O-ring on the bottom to be slightly, uh, you know, basically the same size as the bottle cap. And the bottle cap has a diameter of about three inches. So I just wanted to look down this list for an O-ring, a 1 8 inch O-ring with an outside diameter of about three inches, a little bit less. And this is the one that I ended up using. Um, after, I guess I'll get to the specific dimensions in a moment. But um, after that O-ring was in there, I wanted a little bit of a wall between that gland and the air cylinder. Uh, this isn't necessary, but I just decided to do it this time. I believe it actually would have worked just fine if the O-ring was literally uh, like if this little ledge had come into this cylinder slightly. I think it actually would probably have worked just as well. But I wanted a little wall this time. And when I gave that, you know, the few millimeters of wall there, I found that I had a... Uh, possible cylindi cylinder diameter of about two and three eighths of an inch. So if I go back to the McMaster site, I wanted a, you know, an eighth inch O-ring with about two and three eighths outside diameter. And that's this one right here. For the uh, two smaller sets of O-rings, uh, I decided to use 1 16th inch ones 
And uh, the main thing that I was shooting for when I was picking these ones is I have a 3 8 of an inch diameter shaft going through there. So I just needed some small o-rings with an inside diameter of 3 8 of an inch. And these are the ones that I got. Uh, the outside diameter is also uh, important to note here. It's uh, about half an inch. And in these particular holes, uh, the o-ring will sit against this surface and the rest of this hole will be filled with a brass bushing. So I had to find um, bushings and o-rings that would fit into a half inch hole with a 3 8 inch uh, inner diameter. And there are um, bushings on McMaster that fit that. I plan to kind of make a, a separate video about the bushings. Um, the last one to look at uh, are these ones which um, are inside the the piston. Um, basically all I wanted for these ones is uh, something that was smaller than 3 eighths of an inch because that's the diameter of the shafts that go through and I wanted them to sit on a ledge here so that when I tighten down the jaw against the bottom of the piston here with a bolt, I didn't want um, to rely on the thickness of the o-ring to be, uh, you know, to determine how tall this assembly was. So I wanted uh, the, the shaft to sit on a little ledge here. So I needed to find an o-ring that was smaller than 3 8 outside diameter and had an inside diameter that would allow a uh, number 10 bolt to go through. And um, another ten, number 10 bolt is an inner diameter, I mean an outer diameter of I think 190 thousandths or so. So basically, uh, I was looking at these ones right here. It's big enough for number 10 to go through and small enough that I can have a 3 eighths of an inch shelf um, above where the o-ring sits. So um, I, th I guess what I'll do is I'll look at some of the uh, exact dimensions that I have here. And I'll try to do it quickly. Um, so for this bottom one, it's compressing between the top and bottom. So I want the a little extra room between the inside and outside. So if I look at the o-ring that I'm using, the inner diameter is 2.609 and the outer diameter is 2.887. So if I subtract 5 thousandths from this, that will give it a little bit of room to expand. And if I add 5 thousandths to this, that'll give it a little more room to expand. A total of 10 thousandths of expansion room there. And that's what I've done here is I've got Okay, hopefully that was recorded. Um, and that's what I've done here. I've got uh, an extra five thousandths and then extra five thousandths on the in outside and inside, respectively. For the depth of this gland, I set it at 130 thousandths, which, um, as I mentioned, will... Uh, which is about 10 thousandths. I guess it's only nine thousandths less than the actual width of uh, this particular O-ring. So I look at the piston a little bit closer. Uh, I guess I'll, let me go back to this. Um, the cylinder, I gave it a uh, diameter of exactly two and three eighths. I did that because I wanted um, to make sure I was making a good seal against this outside wall. Uh, so by making it two and three eighths and sticking a an o-ring in there that has an outside diameter of 
12 thousandths larger than 2 and 3 eighths, I'm compressing that o-ring simply by putting it into that hole. Um, for the inside of that o-ring, uh, I'm not sure exactly what I was thinking, but more or less I just have a compressed 5 thousandths right here. So uh, the actual diameter, I hope I uh, got this in the screen correctly. So the actual inner diameter of the piston o-ring is 2.109. So by making the this uh, surface of the gland 2.114, uh, I can compress that o-ring by 5 thousandths. Basically, when I um, put the O-ring onto this piston, it's being stretched slightly. Uh, just, um, I'm not sure if that helps or anything, but it seems to have worked, so I'm sticking with this dimension. Um, a previous take while recording this video, I realized that I'm actually... I think I'm compressing this o-ring by about, it's hard to tell because I'm stretching it out to put it onto the piston so I think that will actually make the diameter slightly smaller. But then I'm compressing it down 12 thousandths on the outside. So I'm not sure if I'm compressing it 10 thousandths or 20 thousandths or maybe it's 15 thousandths, I'm not sure. Um, but I guess I realized that I sort of broke my own rule here, as I've only given it 10 thousandths in which to expand into. I think I'm going to leave it like this because it seems to have worked, but, uh, you know, perhaps, uh, perhaps this isn't enough room, technically, if you were to, you know, calculate out the different volumes and stuff. Alrighty, um... That one, that one, that one. Okay, I think that is all of them, and that might not have been too much time. Oops. While editing this video, I uh, realized that I forgot to mention something that's pretty important. Uh, there are these two small o-rings that uh, go up on the tops of these holes right here and the rest of these holes are filled with uh, brass bushing. Uh, the thing that I forgot to mention is that these bushings are apparently pretty important because you don't want to have the uh, the o-ring be your bearing. Uh, so you don't want the o-ring to be holding this cylinder in place in the in the center of the circle you want something else holding it in place and uh, in in the case of this uh, fixture the brass bushings that I'm placing in these holes are what I'm relying on to hold this piston uh, and keep it aligned with the center of this uh, cylinder here I hope that was helpful um, I also hope that it doesn't take an entire month for me to put out the next video in this series, but uh, we'll see. Alrighty, I'll see you guys next time.